Good evening, everyone. I am your host and instructor, Lainey Shaughnessy, and welcome to Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. Spindle TV is brought to you by Digital Woodcarver, inspiring your creativity and providing you with the tools to create your own unique masterpieces. Hello, hello. How's everybody doing tonight? Hope you're doing well. Uh, hello, Chuck, Jimmy, Kevin, welcome. Ronnie, Donnie, Roger, Bob, and Robert, how are y'all doing tonight? Uh, Chuck, uh, glad to hear that uh, Burl was able to give you some information. Um, also, I was reading an email from you with regards to any uh, any freeze in a water cooled spindle. Um, the, if you're going to use antifreeze, uh, make sure it's a non-corrosive, uh, or corrosive corrosion inhibitor antifreeze, automotive antifreeze, and just a small amount, uh, just enough to make the water turn green or whatever color your antifreeze you're using. And, uh, you should be fine. Uh, really, uh, any liquid, uh, will do. Um, but, uh. In your distilled water just a small portion of antifreeze just enough to uh, keep the water from cooling down or freezing I don't know if there's a particular ratio just enough I've heard the recommendation of RV antifreeze and stuff like that but <clears throat> sometimes you tend to get a little bit of rust and everything rust and corrosion we don't want that all right all right all right well Tonight, uh, we're going to do a variety of a couple of different projects, just little projects that are, uh, they're, they're fun, simple little projects to make that are great sellers. Uh, you know, if we want to make some money and stuff for the farmer's markets or the fairs or anything like that uh, online, depending on what you, you know, what you're doing and how you kind of promote your stuff that you make and everything. Uh, we're going to do uh, a couple of signs uh, for home decor. Um some small uh, gift type boxes. We're going to look at a couple of varieties of uh, gift type boxes, uh, little boxes and things, show you how to make those. Um, might not uh, be the way that you think when you think about a box. And then also, um, we're going to talk about, what was the other one? Oh, just some other crafts and all. Um, vault of candle holders and things like that. We're going to look at a couple of different things uh, to see what we can come up with. All right. <clears throat> okay, Chuck, there you go. Should work well. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Welcome from Iron, Iron Station, North Carolina. Robert, welcome, guys. Jeff, welcome. Ron, everybody. <clears throat> and uh, hope things are going well. Um, for those of you that may not know, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sundays, uh, I am on the road. I'm at the woodworking shows. Uh, be sure to um, you know check out the schedule, see the woodworking show near you, and uh, come out and see us sometime if you're interested in checking out uh, our booth or just classes in general. We have a paid advanced class on Saturdays, but uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday throughout the day we do uh, CNC basics, CAD CAM design um, uh, in general, and CNC machining classes uh, that we offer for free. Um, coming up. For those of you that are digital woodcarver owners, uh, actual digital woodcarver owners and all, we have user group meetings coming up in the uh, northeast, the southeast, and the midwest. The midwest location right now is to be determined. Uh, most all the locations are preliminary, but um, admission tickets are for sale and available on the website digitalwoodcarver.com for uh, owners. All right, let's see here. Um, um. You were snow blowing tonight, Chuck. <laughs> okay. 
Awesome. Hey, I want to do a quick follow up on uh, what was it last week's class or the week before the week before his class, uh, the passive speaker. Um, the uh, plans or, 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 or designs for that uh, I will make available uh, as a downloadable link on the YouTube video. Uh, but for the folks that are digital woodcover owners in the group, uh, the files in there. Uh, for the speaker part, I ended up uh, taking a um, uh, tip from uh, another user and doing a molding toolpath to create the cone, and it worked out very well. So uh, keep an eye out uh, for the link in that class video in the description area for a file, a Vetric file for that, uh, that you can download and play around with. I called it the Rock Doc. Don't be stealing my name now, because that's my little... I like that name. I'm going to use that name. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. It is 719, so let's get this a ball of rolling. Uh, let's go ahead and get on over to our Vetric software, and uh, let's go over a couple of different projects and things, uh, some, some different projects and stuff, and see what we can come up with. Let's, let me go ahead and get my Vetric open. Boom, 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 boom. <clears throat> and then let me switch you guys over to that awesome all right now for the uh we're gonna start off with a um good evening mike how are you doing uh, it's a food evening for everyone, Mike. I'm telling you, man, we, we, we eat all the time around here. <laughs> um, for the first project, let's talk about uh, a little bit of a home decor sign, give you kind of a concept. You know, we're used to kind of V carving and things, uh, signs and stuff, but uh, we're going to do a little bit of V carving in this sign, but let's think a little bit outside the box, not much. And uh, we're going to uh, do uh, a sign that will... Uh, give us the opportunity to take the parts that we cut out and attach them to a uh, different kind of backer to give it more of a rustic feel and look and things. Um, stand by one second, uh, folks, ladies and gentlemen. Please. Had to shut the old cellar phone off. I had to shut the cell phone off. It was a ringing. Uh, I don't know if that was an alarm or I'll have to check see if it was a missed call or something uh, here in a minute. All right. So for the first sign for our first project, we're going to do kind of a home decor sign. And uh, this particular sign, the sign pieces uh, that we're going to attach to a backer board, uh, we're going to cut them out of a, a thin material. Uh, I would say probably quarter of an inch, um, uh, somewhere around there, quarter inch thick, and uh, uh, m maybe three eighths. Uh, you know, I don't want it too big or bulky. And also, we'll go with about a quarter of an inch or a little bit more. Uh, and we're going to cut multiple signs out of one panel. So let's go ahead and say that this board is roughly. I don't know what we can get out of that. Uh, 20 inches in length and a uh, one by 12 board we can get multiple signs out of. So a 12, one by 12 is about 11 and a quarter and we're gonna go about a quarter of an inch thick. Um, now touching off on the material, you can either touch off on the top of your board or touch off on the bottom of your board. That's up to you and your setup and everything. I work off the machine bed in the Vetric software, which means I'm touching off to whatever my project board is sitting on. I'm touching off to my waste board or my tabletop. And in this case, it's my waste board because I have a jig that I use that holds my uh, materials and everything. Uh, and since I do use that jig and that jig slash waste board on my table, uh, it, it, everything is referenced off the bottom left corner. But again, you can start from any corner of the board or the center. So uh, for me, my setup is going to be the bottom left corner. And I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. Awesome. Now, for this, 
Um, I'm going to uh, utilize uh, within the clip art section of the uh, Vetric software, whether it's a desktop, pro, or Aspire. Uh, within the clip art section, there is a 2D vector section with different types of uh, 2D vectors and shapes and things. And, and I'm going to utilize some of these shapes, but that doesn't necessarily mean um, that that's the only way I can create my shapes. We can create our shapes a bunch of different ways and things like that. But I'm going to utilize them since they're already there to kind of help me lay out the signs and all. So in that clip art section under the 2D vectors and all, I'm going to grab a couple of these 2D vectors uh, and throw them up on my board. And then I'm ultimately going to, of course, size them down. They're big when they come in, but I'm ultimately going to size them down uh, to, for some different uh, elements and things. So let's see what we got here. Let's grab a couple of these. And as far as the size, I'll get them all symmetrical and what size that I want them uh, once I pretty much kind of get them on the board. And and which ones I grab and which ones I don't grab and things like that, it, it, it's it's kind of subjective. You know, it's all uh, what whatever you want it to be. And uh, we're gonna take that one, but I'm gonna I'm gonna alter the shape of it a little bit. So we'll take that one. We'll alter the shape of that some. What else do we got here? Uh, let's see here. Little uh, profiles and stuff inside of the 2D vectors and all. Uh, and I'm probably going to go with um, maybe th three or four different shapes and stuff. And let me look and see if there's any other shape or any other profile that I would like and then I'll choose from there which ones I'm gonna keep and which ones I'm not gonna keep and stuff because it's all gonna be coming down to my um, sign itself and uh, the you know the what actual words and whatever I'm gonna put into it all right so I think I've got enough here I've got I, I pulled out five different 2d vectors that were already there for me now again this is it's all you know kind of up to you and, and what you want to do because if I set these aside you know we can pretty much make any type of uh, shape that we want you know whether we start off with a very simple let's get over to our drawing tab we start off with a very simple, you know, uh, rectangle with internal radius uh, corners or something um, for a very simple sign. Or if we wanted to take, and I always start off with a rectangle, and let's get rid of those corners there. Well, actually, we'll leave those corners in there. Uh, and if I wanted to take a circle, we'll snap a circle here and... Let's do the same thing here. And da, 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 da. let's move them in a little bit. So one, oops, one, two, three. One, two, three. And trim these away. You know, we can make our own shapes and stuff however we want. Uh, we don't necessarily have to use ones that are pre-made, but being able to use them uh, pre-made is, uh, you know, it's nice. It kind of makes things move along a little quicker. So I'll add those to the mix, even though this one and this one are pretty much identical, right? Except for this one's a little bit longer and narrow while this one is blunt over here. So let's take, and I'm going to drop this one over here, but I'm going to get rid of this one because it's the same as the other one. All right, so now, uh, and again, whatever you wanted to say in these uh, different uh, bubbles, let's call them, or, or within these vectors and all, is going to be you know totally up to you and uh, the sign that you're making. I'm going to make kind of a live, laugh, love, sing, dance, dream, play type of thing. Uh, you'll see that in just a moment. Uh, now, all of these parts are going to get V-carved 
and uh, they're going to um, they're going to get V carved out, and uh, then they're going to get adhered. If I were to draw what I was going to make, uh, I'd probably because I'm going to end up painting these uh, boards different colors before I carve them. I'll, I'll paint the the you know these different areas, uh, you know different colors and things uh, before I carve them. Um, I'll throw on some paint in just different areas where they're going to get cut out and stuff. But ultimately, I would probably take, let's say I was taking pallet wood or something, something kind of a rustic. And let's say, let's turn off those corners there. Uh, let's turn off those corners. Let's say that I take a control key to make a copy. Control makes a copy when you're in transform mode. So if I were to drag over a copy... And one more. Oops. And then across the back now, if we were, you know, we're seeing through this and everything, but across the back of this, there would be some type of bracing, you know, for the board. And then each of these uh, individual signs sized appropriately are going to be you know put down this board and everything they're going to be adhered on glued on whatever the case may be we're going to have different uh you know uh, different layout and stuff so with that being said let's come up with something to say let's uh take this one this shape here i'm going to throw it on the board but i doubt i'm going to use it uh, unless I alter this a little bit and reduce this height. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. We're going to do a little bit of node editing. Um, so imagine if we have a sign, however big and wide we want it to be, that would hang on a wall. We'd have some type of hanger back there and everything. Uh, whether it be one board with grooves cut into it to make it look like three individual boards or whether we actually use three individual rustic type boards, old pallet wood or something like that, that, that you know, maybe it's an old painted fence or something that's kind of worn. How, you know, be creative, do, do whatever, you know, it is you want. Um, now, what I want to do is I would like to know what size, how wide and everything my board's going to be so I know how wide to make these individual plates uh, that are going to get cut out. And for this, I would probably um, go about, um, uh, 11 inches wide, you know, something like that. So let's keep everything, all of these under 11 inches in width. And of course this is only a 20 inch board. So they're right now, even if I were to look, uh, none of them are you know they're only like five inches or so like that so again it's kind of uh subjective to whatever you know it is that you want to do and all i'm just gonna uh, my three panels i'm assuming they would probably be what's a slap board for a, a piece of pallet wood you know maybe um i think they're like three and a half inches wide so three six nine uh ten eleven twelve so it's got yeah somewhere around 11 inches wide right uh you know is where we're gonna be so let's However many, you know, we need to, you know, I'm going to probably end up after I creating these, I'm going to probably rotate or position them on this board to where I can maximize my or minimize my waste, should I say, maximize my yield uh, to cut them out of. And then if it takes me, you know, two boards, one board, one and a half, whatever the case may be, I'll do. But let's go ahead and kind of get these up to size. Let's start. <clears throat> let's start. Well, let's see what I want to do here. Let's move this off to the side for a moment. And knowing that I'm going to be cutting these out of, uh, and we all, uh, I'm, I'm staying at 20 inches because I want this to be a project for those that have small CNC's, you know, mini carvers and things like that. Uh, but the length of your board, you know, up to 24 inches, what have you. Uh, but for you guys and girls that have uh, larger cutting areas and things your your board that your your quarter inch uh, piece that you're cutting this out of could be larger you know to fit them all in uh, again I'm going with about 11 and a quarter uh, wide by 20 inches in length and about a quarter inch thick uh, and stuff 
So let's go ahead and I'm going to start over here. We're going to actually work off the board. And then as I fill these in, I'm going to group them together and then I'll position them on the board as we go. Uh, but first, let's get our size for these parts correct. So I'm going to probably assume or say that each of these, I want to keep them under 11 inches. And then, of course, there's going to be a height as well. So as I, if I were to extend this right now, it's, it's going to want to keep its aspect ratio, right? If I, said, if I said I wanted this to be 11 inches, it's going to make it 6 inches in height, right? Uh, and, and, and big and everything. Well, I don't want to do that. Uh, what I want to do is I want to unlink the X, Y. And if I change my width, and I'm going to go 10 on all of these. Um, you know, I'm basically just kind of stretching out the shapes and that's kind of what I want too. I want a little bit of an organic shape for these. So I'm going to go 10 inches on each of these unlinking the X, Y. So I'm only changing the width. Um, and then the height of them, I will adjust independently depending on the words and things or whatever it is that I'm wanting to get in there. So right now I'm going to individually change these to 10 inches. This one is definitely going to get uh, widened up a little bit. It's a little bit narrow uh, on the edges. I don't want my words getting squished and stuff in there. Uh, so actually, let's do that now. Let's take this one and kind of stretch it out a little bit. All right, same thing here. We're going to go 10 inches. 10 inches. And this one below, now again, I'm, I may use just five of these and I'm going to rotate them, alternate them, and I might use the one more than once and stuff. I just threw a couple of different designs on the board uh, to give some uh, variety and stuff. But one of the things I want to do with this one is this bubble here, uh, a little bit too high for my liking and things. I want it a little bit more narrow like the one below this arc. I keep saying bubble, but the arc. Let me use proper terms here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into node editing mode. And I'm going to take and pull this down a bit. I'm actually going to delete this point right here. And turn this to an arc. And pull it down a bit. And same thing at the bottom, I'm going to take and delete that center point right there. And I'm going to turn that from a Bezier curve into an arc. So I can kind of shape it. And I'm not a fan of this shape in general. So I may not even use it at all. Uh, you know, But I want something unique. I want this sign when it's hanging up to really stand out. And each one of these are going to get cut. Uh, they're going to get, uh, uh, you know, painted a different color. The whole board itself, the whole part itself and everything are, um, they're going to get, uh, colored individually. I might do some sanding and, and around the edges to kind of wear down the edges and stuff. Um, and, uh, kind of go from there. All right. So let's get started with some text. Now I'm working off the board, guys and girls, I'm working off the board, uh, and, the um, uh, all of the the reason why I'm working off the board is because I'm going to position them to where I can minimize my waste on the board that I'm going to be cutting out, and ultimately, you know, I'm going to be placing these on here. And what we'll do is we'll get a shrunken version of these uh, momentarily, and we'll lay them out on this board so you can actually see the the finished look and stuff and everything. So I'm working off the board. If you're wondering why I'm working in the gray space, it's just because I want to kind of create my design over here and then put it onto my material. All right, so for this, I'm going to uh, look at, uh, I don't want each of the signs to have the same font, right? So I want to look at different fonts that I want to be able to work with. And one of the things that we can use uh, with to help us pick fonts, uh, I'm going to come over to um, a blank screen here, and I'm going to go to wordmark.it, Word Market. Word Market is a site that helps us choose fonts. Uh, on Word Market, uh, be sure to enable the Adobe Flash. Um, and allow it so that it shows you all the fonts that are on your computer. 
and when I you know type in a word or a phrase or whatever it may be it shows me all of the fonts that are on my computer currently and it's a great way to help you quickly and easily choose a font um, when you're in the Vetric software you have a drop down for your fonts and you get this A B C D E A B C D E one two three little sample to the right of that font, but a lot of times it really doesn't give you a full picture, right? You're just seeing a few letters and and everything, and what do the other letters look like and all that? So wordmark.it is a great way to help you choose uh, fonts and everything. So let's go through. I'm gonna pick probably. I'm gonna go with a variety of about three different fonts, three different main fonts for the main words uh, that I will um, use multiple times. And uh, then uh, I'll use a regular font for um, the minor words. So let's go ahead and let's grab three different fonts. And let's see what we got here. All right, so Saddlebag, this font I have called Saddlebag. And if you're wondering where I get my fonts from, dafont.com, D-A-F-O-N-T.com. It's a great site to find thousands of free fonts to use for both personal and commercial use. So I'm going to use the Saddlebag font. Um, let me... Take a little marker here and write that down on my little notepad here so I remember. Saddlebag. All right. And. Bum, 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 bum. I'm going to go with. Did I spell live right? L I V E. It just doesn't look right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I want kind of a, almost like a Times New Roman look as well on this. Uh, the engraver mount looks okay, but let's see what we got here. The Cooper Black, kind of that bubbled letter and everything. We'll use that. Cooper, be okay. All I have to do, the name, the name underneath the font, or the name underneath my sample and all is the font. And um, it uh, that's all I need to choose for my drop-down list. And also this Algerian font I like. And I believe this Algerian font I got off of um, the font.com as well. So I like that one, Algerian. All right, I think that's going to be my three main fonts. Uh, the Tahoma font, standard Tahoma font, is what I'm going to use for the small text that I'm going to be using in this sign. And I believe, I believe I can fly. Let's see here. I believe that that is going to do it for me. I'm just going to take one last perusal. If I wanted a block style font, the Rockwell. Rockwell font would be a decent one. But let me take one last perusal. Yep, I'm going to be happy with that. All right, so let's get out of that and let's get back over here. So the first one I will use will be the Saddlebag font. So I'm going to come down to my list and grab that. And uh, there's going to be two separate fonts in here uh, on each sign. And I'll use the Tahoma for kind of the basic lettering and then my decorative font for whatever it may be uh, so uh, for this you know I told you we're gonna do kind of a live laugh love type of thing so we'll go live and then I'm gonna change to my Tahoma font and in smaller text now of course I'm gonna be rearranging these fonts here or these words here in a minute but I'm just getting them typed on the board and all uh, and let's I'm gonna use all caps
and let's go with a small half inch tall <clears throat> do I want to go with a half inch tall I'm gonna go three point three seven five all right, so let's get this uh, first one, let's get it sized up a bit. And I'll show you how to center and all. I'm gonna position it right about here. And this is gonna be kind of underneath. And with these guys, I'm gonna select them first, hold down my shift key, select my outside profile last. And in the alignment tool, I'm going to uh, align left to right. Okay, kind of get them positioned and centered like that all right and when I'm happy with the way it looks at all I'm going to come in and while they're selected group them together now before I group this let's kind of take a close look at this I have some uh, spacing issues <clears throat> and overlapping lines and everything so uh, I'm gonna want to address those now when you're spacing, you have what's called the Edit Text Spacing and Curve tool in your software under the Create Vectors third icon, uh, third row. And when you put your, when you have a font selected and you put your mouse between two letters, uh, you'll see this V and A pop up with two arrows. And right now, if I were to left click, I'm going to be moving inward in the direction of those arrows. If I hold my Shift key down, those arrows are going to change direction and then I would be pushing the letters apart. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give myself a little bit of spacing. You know, to where it doesn't look unnatural, but they're not together. not too far apart but not on top of each other and that was too much that's good and then here again holding the shift key the whole time uh, to space apart All right. Now, once while I was spacing and everything, it did keep the text centered for me and all. But just in case it didn't, I'm going to hold down my shift key and grab the outside border with that text being selected first. And I'm going to hit this center, this left to right, and make sure that it is centered, which it is. So now that I've got that laid out, I'm going to go ahead and group that together. All right. So that's going to be one of my little placards. This is going to get V carved in. Uh, and then this is going to get cut out and it's going to be attached to my signboard. All right, so I want to, uh, what order I go in is going to be depending on how I want these things uh, looking when they hang up on my wall or uh, on, my, on my sign. I want to kind of mix and match, right? We'll kind of mix and match uh, what we're doing here. And you can do that ahead of time. If I said, okay, let's kind of uh, mix and match here and get things laid out so I can just go right down the row and start putting the text in. Um, I'd probably throw this one here. Uh, we'll throw this one I'm going to leave that one off for a minute. Let's grab this one here because I want to mix and match these a little bit. So I like this one a lot. So let me ungroup it for a moment. Ungroup that for a moment. So I can double click on this and hold the control key down and drag a copy of that down. I kind of like that one. I want to use that one more than once. One, two, three, four, five. I'm not a big fan of this one. I don't think I'm going to use that one at all. Let's throw this one in the mix. Let's see, where do I want him? I want to use him, but I need to alter him a little bit. Um, I don't like these little swoops out here, so I'm going to go into node editing. And I'm going to cut the vector here. And down here, 
over here, same thing. I'm going to cut the vector here and down here. And I'm going to remove those two ends. And I'm going to take my two remaining vectors here and I'm just going to join them with a straight line by clicking that twice. There we go. And I should have one closed vector by jo using the join tool. And that's the shape I want. I like that. And now he's not 10 inches anymore. I just cut off some of his length, right? So let's bring him back up to 10 inches wide. Him or her or it, should I say properly. Um, all right, so I want nine of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's take this one here and hold the control key down. Seven. We'll grab this one. Eight. Whatever order, if you want to be, if 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 your OCD is driving you nuts right about now, going, oh god, that's just driving me nuts because I did. They're all over the place, uh, and you want some kind of systematicness to it or whatever the case may be definitely go for it you know what I mean uh, uh, this is just kind of a random pattern there oops I, I didn't hold the control key always hold your control key okay let's get rid of that one I don't want that so I should have one two three four five six seven eight nine that'll be good now that I kind of have the general layout and all since I'm only using this one once, I'll make that kind of almost like my center one where I have four. All right, one, two, three, four. Yeah, let's move this over here. Let's move this one up. That'll be my number five one since I'm only using him once. And then one, two, three, four. That'll help you out if you got that... Uh, CD going there. And somebody's going to say, oh man, Lainey, you're driving me nuts because, you know, it's the same kind of pattern and stuff, but the two on the bottom are reversed, man. Switch that around or I'm going to go nuts. All right, so let's do that. I want this to be a very friendly video, not drive anyone crazy. So we'll make that kind of uniform somewhat, right? We'll have some kind of system, even though it's random. All right. Okay. So now uh, I like the saddlebag font. I'll use that a couple of times throughout this. Uh, but the other font I said I was going to use was the Cooper Black and then the Algerian. Now the Algerian is a little bit different. It's almost like a little bit of a shadow around it as well and everything. But let's start off with the uh, Cooper Black and C on the keyboard and then scroll down to Cooper. This is going to be a little bit puffy, right? Puffy, puffy. And it might not be the appropriate font um, for this. All right. Oh, let me drag it back over here. I should have clicked inside my shape to throw it in there. I'll make it uh, bigger and everything when I get it sized. But let me get my other font in here. And again, I'm going to stick with the, for the small text, I'm going to skip, stick, stick, stick with the Tahoma font um, for my small print. Uh, and um, hit the letter T on my keyboard. And I'm using like a Tahoma bold and I'm going three eighths of an inch. I want to keep that somewhat consistent uh, throughout this. And so, uh, all capital letters. And of course, I didn't click in my box, so it's all right and over to the side. Let me grab it so it pulls it onto the screen. And this is one of quite a few different projects that were due, so I'm going to try to go through this a little bit uh, faster. Not fast, but, you know, somewhat fast. Uh, and let's get everything. I'm going to select these two fonts here, and then I'm going to hold down my shift key and select that outside border last, 
and I'm going to use the align to selection to align that. Okay. All right. So our next one. And you can use more than three. I, I only picked three fonts. Uh, uh, you, you can use more than, than three fonts and stuff, um, whatever you want. I'm just trying to simplify it somewhat, right, to make it easy. All right, let's go into our text tool, and I'm going to first all click in here to throw my text in here. I'm starting with my big text. I'm starting about one inch, right, and then I'll size it uh, accordingly, uh, you know, depending on what I think just appeals to me, right? It all It's all about um, what appeals to us and everything. And this font is going to be the uh, Algerian. Let's try Algerian. Now, Algerian is going to give us a completely different look than what the other two fonts are. Uh, it's more of kind of like a drop shadow type carve. And again, that Algerian font, I believe I picked it up off of uh, thefont.com. Uh, it's going to give us a completely kind of unique look. You'll see when we actually carve it. Um, how that looks and everything gonna give us kind of a drop shadow look and now let's go in there we're, we're, we're rocking through we're rocking through let's see here uh, let's click in here again to, and I'm switching back and forth to home is my main font for the small text 0.375 and uh, make sure you put a decimal in there it's gonna be 375 and um, oh, capital letters. Is no one, uh, one word or two? Let's do two words. No one is listening. I'm going to go bold. And... All right, now on this one, I've got some spacing issues again. I'm gonna, before I space, I wanna stretch this out to how I want it. I want it right about there. And let's move it up a little bit. Move laugh down a little. All right, so I got to fix my spacing. Once again, that's the edit text spacing and curve tool. And if you don't want to have to spend time fixing spacing and all that, pick a font that doesn't kind of tend to overlap itself, right? Um, and do we do one click or two click between each letter? You know, it's just kind of what, what looks good. Um, I'm just, I don't want to be too spread apart, but. Let me get over to the word listing here. Get on over here. By the way, if you point your mouse over something, if you have a roller wheel on your mouse, it will zoom in to where that mouse pointer is. Uh, let's see here. Hold that shift key down and let's spread things apart. That looks good. It doesn't look too unnatural. So I'm going to select uh, these two uh, texts first. Hold down my shift key. Select the border last. And once again, in the alignment tool, I'm going to center that up. So you can start to smell what we're cooking. Right, right, right. And again, these would be painted different colors. So it kind of it really makes it pop. The backboard would be painted... Uh, you know, kind of a lightish color. So these uh, placards, we'll call them, stand off of it and all. Just a nice little home decor sign. Uh, it's not original by any means. There are signs out there. There's live, laugh, love signs all over the place. You could be original with your, uh, what you say, what you do, what you, what you want and everything. Um, and uh, all that stuff. And let's see here text box let's click inside here we're gonna focus on this one 
All right, so we're gonna go this. And this font, I'm going back, and we can be creative. We can use other fonts and stuff, but I'm going back to the Saddlebag. I like the Saddlebag font. It's kind of one of my favorites. Uh, and we're gonna go, I'll stretch it out, but I'll start with the one inch tall. And then click in the text box here. And I'm gonna change to the Tahoma, hit the letter T. It'll bring me to Tahoma there. Bold and three eight. So it's a lot of back and forth. Now I could go in with one font, right? With the Tahoma, go in and write all my little sub phrases since I have them written down and then go back and choose the main fonts, right? I'm just doing one at a time. Uh, so, uh, and again, did we decide if no one is one or two words? Uh, we'll do two. No one can here. And I'm gonna stretch that out. All right, let's get this uh, in position somewhat. Then I'll make sure it's centered. I'd like that to be kind of down here. And sing. Probably right about there. And then I'll select both of those fonts. Hold down my shift key, grab that one last. And center, align to selection. Oh, we're getting somewhere now. All right. Now, this is kind of my divider line, right? In my divider line. <laughs> That's my odd man out. That's my odd shape out. He's all by himself. All right. Let's pop over to make sure. Um, welcome, Carmen. Hey, Carmen. How are you doing? Hey, uh, Jay-Z. 85. How you doing, bud? How are y'all all doing? Uh, Leroy's. Hello. I um, just uh, happened to see some new people pop in. Wanted to say hi to you all. All right. Let's get back to where we were. Uh, let's see here. What is our what is our text tool, right? Click inside the box is where I want the text. One inch tall is kind of what I'm starting with, right? Uh, but um, uh, I, I end, you'll end up stretching it and uh, you know making it fit however you want. But it's kind of what I'm what I'm starting with, right? Uh, let's see here. And uh, let's see here. I've kind of been going between uh, Saddlebag, Cooper, and Algerian. Let's pop back over to um, wordmark.it. And let me, let me take a quick glance and see if there's any other font that kind of sticks out at me. I like the Ravi, but let's see here. I'm kind of going with that. Almost block, except for the, 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 the Cooper has kind of that bubbled edges and everything. But let's see here. Modern. I could go with modern. That's almost like a Times New Roman. Lucida. Comica. I like Comica. We'll do Comica. Comica title. Tell. That is a dafont.com font. We'll do Comica. <laughs> I like saying that. That sounds cool. All right. So let's hit the letter K on the keyboard and Comica title. Uh, I know there's a Comica title right there. And let's stretch that out a bit. Hold the shift key and pull that out. And I want different different things i want each of these placards to stand out in their own little right uh to catch the eye of the people who use it so i don't want the same boring font i want to switch it up uh and stuff like it on the main keywords and stuff all right so uh this is going to be a tahoma 0.375 i've kind of gone with 0.375 as the height for the font that I want and um, kind of a bold um, all right and I'll spread this out a bit All right, 
I've got now sometimes when I type in text sometimes there's no overlapping right everything is spaced nice and sometimes it's not spaced so nice and all that wonderful stuff and we got to clean it up so you take the good with the bad you know the song and the facts of life take the good with the bad I don't want to I can't say I can't sing it out loud I'll get copyrighted or something for a uh, uh, TV show all right so as if no one make sure I put a couple extra spaces there is watch all right let's get that up in the position where I want it uh, I'm gonna go probably right about there and then once again once I'm happy with that I'm gonna select my two fonts rinse and repeat uh, outside border and align center okay so live laugh love sing dance sing dance right as if no one is watching text I'm gonna use the um, uh, Algerian font again for this one and um, bold. Let's go with a one inch tall text on that for the time being. We'll size it up differently. Let's get that onto our. Oop, we skipped one. Let's get that up here. Dream it almost like it's in a little cloud, right? A little dream cloud. There we go. All right. So. Um, This is going to be 0.375. We're almost there, guys. We only have three more to go. Three more to go. 0.375. And this is going to be a Tahoma font. Bold. And... All right, we're gonna select both of those. Select this and center. Okay. Starting to be a nice looking little sign if we looked at it, right? So, so far, so good. All right, let's go here. And which font do I want? Uh, we'll do Cooper Black again. We'll do Cooper Black again. One inch and I'm just one inch is kind of uh, where I'm starting at but if I need to stretch it I'll stretch it if I need to scale it or something I'll scale it and all you know if I need to stretch it I can stretch it right and <clears throat> Tahoma font. We'll get past this one as soon as we're done, and we can go into our gift boxes. I like making the boxes. You'll see some really neat stuff here. Uh, we'll ask some questions and everything after we do this one before we jump into the boxes. So Tahoma 0.375 uh, bold and <clears throat> oops, capital letters. I got my cap locks on like a goofball, uh, like. There are no winners. All right, select both of those fonts and align to center. All right, two more, two more, two more. Okay. Uh, 
Metal bag. Let me see here. Let me back this up a little bit. Let me take a overall look here. So I'm going to use the uh, Kakoma font again. Started with saddlebag. I got saddlebag there. I'll go saddlebag one more time. Then we'll end with the Kakoma font. Kakoma, Kakoma. All right, let's go saddlebag. And uh, oops, down a little low. I missed a spot. Um, Tahoma, rinse and repeat point three seven five. Bold. All right, let's do some spacing on this one. We've got a little bit of a spacing issue again. Hold that shift key down and just click away. Okay, all right, let's see where do I want to position these guys at. So let's get back into normal selection mode here. And let's move him kind of down a bit. Let's move him kind of right there. Select both of them, hold down the shift key, grab that border last, and center with the alignment tool. All right. Actually, I'm missing one. Live, laugh, love, sing, dance, dream, play, give, smile. Text tool. And for this one, I'm going to use that Kakoma uh, title. Uh, bold will go one inch. I'll stretch that out most definitely. I want it a little stretched out. So I'm going to stretch that out. All right. Now on the Kakoma font, I am going to have to do a little bit of cleanup on the loops and stuff uh, we got to break that up and clean up some of those loops can't have any loops or overlapping lines uh, so that will be the one font that I do have to go back and kind of clean up uh, but we'll we'll tackle that in just a moment we'll do one of them and Tahoma bold 0.375 Oh, let's be proper spelling there. Again, just a very simple little cute little home decor sign. Um, let's do something here. Let's... All right, hold down the shift key, grab the outside border, align center. All right, now I'm missing one, missing one. So what shape do I want to reuse? Let's see here. Uh, we'll go with the bubble. We'll go with the cl 
cloud. So I'm going to hold down my control key and drag a copy of that down here. And we'll do our last one. And for this, I want to end with we'll do the um, Algerian font. One inch tall. All right, and then Tahoma font. clean this up a bit bold bold okay um, text spacing hold down the shift key and I'm just gonna space myself out Oop, not that much on that one and I'm just putting my mouse between the letters that I want to space and holding my shift key so I'm spacing outward There's no, you know, I'm trying to like two, three clicks, two, three clicks, whatever, you know, whatever it may be. Whatever looks somewhat decent. All right. Now, looking at that long phrase and everything, is there a better fitting shape? on a feeling let's see here I got one two bubbles I got one two of those one two I got two of everything I don't know why I'm counting um we'll take this one control key drag that down there we go all right so let's get this uh, kind of Position where I want it. Select both fonts. Hold down the shift key. And, oops, try holding your shift key. Select that last one and then align to send. Up. Okay. So now here's our individual placards um, in all. And let's say that, uh, let's take our, you know, and I didn't group them together yet, but let's imagine, let's try to see if I can draw this sign out here to scale. Here, let me group that together before I go.
if you will, use your imagination, uh, you know, you'll have, you know, this type of sign wall, just again, a little home decor type uh, sign. These cross brackets here, these are in the back, right? These uh, rectangles here. So you wouldn't see them, of course. Uh, but, you know, something to use your imagination. All right, so now let's, uh, let's take and let's move this out of the way. All right, let's take and let's group each of these together. We're going to select one at a time and group them individually. I don't want the position of the letters or anything to change as I'm sorting them out on my board. So I'm selecting them individually and using the group tool. It's the fourth icon on the first row of the edit objects menu. Now also you can use the G on your keyboard for group. You can select the item in G for group. U for ungroup, okay, G. So, keyboard shortcut. Okay, now each of these are size 10 inches. They're the size that I want in everything and on this. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, let's see if I can use my nesting tool, right? If you don't have nesting, just move the things on the board. But let's see what I can do with the nesting tool to minimize my waste. Uh, for the cutout, um, I could use an eighth inch bit or even a quarter inch. It doesn't matter. I mean, these are going to be little 10 inch uh, signs and all that. Um, we'll go with a, a quarter inch tool bit. Um, I'm going to have some tabs and stuff between them when I cut them out. Uh, we'll add some tabs and stuff in there. And my border gap is how far I want them away from the edge of my board. I'm really not too concerned about that, but I'll leave a sixteenth of an inch. I'll let it rotate it, uh, you know, up to 45 degrees. I don't want to mirror it to fit. I don't want to line inside of other parts. Let's see what the nesting tool does for me. See if it gives me any... Uh, if, it, if it's a good layout, if not, then I'm just going to throw them on the board, uh, you know. Okay. So it's going to take two boards. Um, let's increase the gap, the clearance, because uh, I will be putting tabs on these and everything. So let's give myself a little bit more room. Give a little bit more room. Uh, on that clearance, let's go with a eighth of an inch, sixteenth or an eighth. Uh, let's see what that does. Okay, there we go. All right. Now, of course, if you don't have nesting, you can you know just move them and move and position them individually how you would like. Uh, with nesting, we have two sheets, uh, two of these little quarter inch sheets that's going to be uh, needed to be done. And over in the nesting tool, you have active sheet one and then active sheet two. Um, if you um, don't have nesting where it creates the second sheet for you, create two separate layers, sheet one and sheet two, and just lay them out individually how you would want to position them on your board. Uh, you know, manually move them over, rotate them, however you want to fit and stuff. So, goody goody. We'll go with that. And let's go ahead and, oops, it! don't do that, guys. Uh, always click OK. Um, let's get that back to the way it was. Always click OK to confirm and lock it in. All right. So on this, on sheet one, let's go over to our cam side now. We're going to go ahead and select all of our uh, text and stuff. They're all grouped together, right? So now that I've um, got them positioned and they're not going to move anymore from here, I can go ahead and ungroup them because I need to separate the text from the borders because the borders are going to be a profile cut. The text are going to be a V-carve cut. Uh, so on and so forth. So I'm going to ungroup and that's I'm just hitting the letter U on my keyboard to ungroup. And so let's take all the text and we're going to v-carve this. Now these, this remember this is going to be quarter inch material and these big letters like love and everything are going to want to cut through. If I don't use a flat depth and I use a 60 degree v-bit, it's going to want to cut through, right? It's wanting to cut through about a half inch deep. Uh, so 
I've got to use a flat depth on 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 this, uh, or else it's going to want to cut through, or else I'd have to use a thicker piece of wood. And and if you get too thick, then the sign gets really bulky. You know what I mean? Uh, big and bulky, and we don't want that. So I will use a flat depth, and my flat depth is going to be about an uh, eighth of an inch. And I am going to use a flat area clearance tool when I can. Uh, if you don't have a flat area clearance tool that it would be small enough to fit into the areas, um, then, uh, you know, uh, your V-bit can do it. It's going to be a little bit rough. It's going to be a long carving, but it's going to be a little bit rough in the texture on the big letters and all. If you don't have a flat area clearance tool, uh, you can go down to Lowe's or Home Depot.